honor the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of the State of Nebraska. Tell me, will you please raise your right hand while I administer the oath? In 1972, Chambers was re-elected to his first full term. He quickly rose to chair the Government and Military Affairs Committee. The consummate outsider was now inside amongst the powerful. He immediately focused his efforts on changing election laws in the city of Omaha. It was uh, the contention of Senator Chambers, who was a primary movement on the election bills, that the at-large election of uh, members of the school board and the Douglas County Board and the Omaha City Council worked a real hardship on a minority community because blacks as such could never get black representation on any of those bodies. They simply were outnumbered by whites and whites, according to Senator Chambers, consistently voted white. The name recognition was in the, the powers that be and in the white community. Uh, and, and simply put, uh, white folk wouldn't vote for a black person. You know, number one, they didn't know him, and if they did know him, they wouldn't vote for him anyway. His first point of attack, the way members were elected to the Omaha School Board. For years, Chambers had been the most outspoken critic of the Omaha public school system. He consistently attacked the board for what he believed were the school system's segregated practices. Two years earlier, the Justice Department had concluded that the schools were indeed unconstitutionally segregated and looked to the board for a resolution. They said, look, if you will take responsibility for desegregating a handful of schools that we think are high-impact schools, then we will let you alone. If you will discontinue certain uh, racially biased uh, transfer policies, we will let you alone. If you will uh, do a couple of other things, then we will let you alone. The price that the Omaha School District would have had to pay back in 1971 to desegregate the Omaha public schools in, by settlement was relatively modest in the greater scheme of things. But the Omaha School District decided that it was not guilty of any wrongdoing, and so it chose not to settle. Getting district elections through the body would be an uphill climb. Chambers had to convince 24 others of the merits of changing the election laws for the state's largest school district. Senators John DeCamp and Terry Carpenter lined up alongside Chambers and were instrumental in maneuvering the bill through the unicameral. The original district elections bill was my bike path bill. And when the legislature, most of them would skip out on Friday afternoon, we'd gut that bill and put the district election bill, which they had trapped, we'd put it in there and we'd roll it. Then they'd come back on Monday and undo it. I don't know how many times we did that. But I know what it is. Senator Carpenter, on the other hand, cleverly cautioned colleagues against playing into Senator Chambers' hands. He said, you know what, Senator Chambers doesn't want this bill. He tricks you, he tricks you all the time. What he wants you to do is kill this bill. Then he can go back in his neighborhood and hang you up on the telephone pole and tell how all of you are racist and you're unfair. But I'll tell you what you ought to do. Don't give him what he wants. Pass this bill. Three times in four years, the Nebraska legislature did just that. And each time, the bill was vetoed by then-Governor Jim Exxon. Finally, in 1975, Chambers was able to muster up enough support to override Exxon's veto. The battle to get district elections for school board members lasted five years, and he didn't stop there.